Oh, hi there. I'm just pretending to edit a video in Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and I'm doing that so I can start talking about the one thing that is keeping me from going all in with editing my simpler videos in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Now, I've really been enjoying editing in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I've edited my YouTube shorts, I've edited some channel member videos, and I even edited one main channel video in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I use my pencil. I have this really nice TomTok case that lets it be sort of propped up and easy to edit. It's really a wonderful experience, but there is just this one thing that is eating away at me and consuming all of my time to do this very basic, simple thing that is essential for a video, and that is audio crossfades. So for you to better understand the pain and misery I'm suffering through, I'm gonna show you the two ways that you can do audio crossfades in Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and then I'm gonna show you in Final Cut Pro for desktop the incredible way that you can do it there. It's much simpler, much faster, and you can do it to an entire edit, literally with a click and drag lasso of all your clips and one keyboard shortcut and all your audio crossfades are there. All right, so we're on Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and I have a little timeline here with just a bunch of iPhone clips from a recent trip to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And I wanna do some audio crossfades because there's lots of different set, sort of sound values. So let's play it back. And you can just hear that those cuts are really abrupt. So we wanna blend those together with audio crossfades. So there's two ways to do it. You can do it through the inspector by applying audio crossfades, or you can do it using keyframes and do those crossfades manually. The first thing that you need to do is you need to expand your clips by tapping option and then hitting expand all clips from the timeline options menu. You'll see your audio drops down and now you can select your audio and your video separately from each other. And that means that you can drag these these handles out so that you have uh, room to do your audio crossfade. Now, if you tap on inspect in the lower left, you'll see this fade in, fade out area. All you have to do is tap on it. And now you can do a fade in of, let's just do three seconds. And you can also change the type. You can do linear plus three dB, so a nice little curve minus three dB or an S curve. I usually just leave it at the broader curve default. So now you see you've got that handle. Now you got to do it on the other side. So you wanna fade that clip out, tap on fade out, and we'll do another three seconds, and then tap out of it, and you can see we have our audio crossfade applied. Now to do the other clip, you wanna select it, and then extend this clip out, extend this clip out, and you're gonna tap on this, hit fade out, do three seconds, tap away, and then you'll select this clip, and we have to do a fade in for that clip, and we'll do three seconds, tap away, and now our audio crossfade between these three clips is all set up, so let's play it back. And it's a lot smoother. There's some levels adjustments that might need to happen, some audio effects applied. But for the most part, that audio crossfade is making that cut point a lot smoother and easier to process. But you can see how long it took me just to do those steps. All right, so let's go over how you can do a crossfade manually by doing it with keyframes in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my playhead to the cut point I have snapping turned on. I'm gonna select the clip that I want to apply a crossfade to, and then I'm gonna tap volume in the bottom left, and I'm gonna select the audio hit the plus sign here in the bottom right with the diamond around it, and then I'm gonna move the playhead off to the left and hit the plus sign again. And then with that first keyframe selected, I'm gonna adjust this to bring the volume all the way down to zero. And it's gonna have this nice arc to it on the audio. So for this clip, I'm gonna go to the playhead again, and then I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hit the plus sign to add a keyframe. I'm gonna go to the end and then add another keyframe here and then I'm gonna drop the volume down to zero. So now we have an audio crossfade there and we'll play, what, play it back what it sounds like. And that's a pretty smooth transition, but you can see that that process is pretty time consuming. Let's see how long it takes me to do it more at full speed. So we'll hit plus, move to the end, back it up just one frame, hit plus again, then drop that volume. Then we'll go here, tap on this clip, hit the plus sign, go back to the beginning, move it up 
no, let's just do one frame plus, then drop that level down. So you can see doing that every clip over and over again for a eight to 12 minute long edit, which I've done before, it's incredibly time consuming. Now to give you an idea of how quickly you can do it in Final Cut Pro for desktop, let's go ahead and jump into the edit bay and take a look at Final Cut Pro for the desktop to show you how you can apply audio crossfades so much faster. So I've got a bunch of clips here in the timeline from a local shoot I did here in Omaha, and they all have different audio values between them. So let's take a listen. So we want to make sure that that all blends evenly between the clips. And Final Cut Pro for desktop has an awesome feature built in where you can use a keyboard shortcut to do audio crossfades. So I'm going to select them all and just so that you can see what happens when you apply the audio crossfade, I'm going to hit Control S to expand the audio and then I'm going to hit Option T to apply the audio crossfade. And you're gonna see that Final Cut Pro automatically creates J and L cuts between each of these clips. An L cut is it this, this, because this is the shape of an L and this is the shape of a J. It creates all those J and L cuts across your entire edit and puts an audio crossfade in automatically so that it sounds. Now with the particularly noisy noise floors into something more quiet, you may have to massage these transitions by extending one out and making it a little bit uh, more gradual. But for the most part, the first pass that it does is gonna get you really close to where you need to be. And you're not gonna have to do all the tedious work of applying the fade in and fade out like you do in the inspector in Final Cut for the iPad or uh, using the keyframes like you do in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So this to me is one of the best features in Final Cut Pro for desktop. And because it's missing from Final Cut Pro for the iPad, it makes it incredibly difficult to do edits where you're finishing off some audio in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So I hope with version 1.1.1 or 1.2 that we'll see this feature added so that I can chop some serious broccoli in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. That's at least the hope. That's it. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching this weird demo angle of the whole setup. I just didn't feel like setting up, uh, tearing apart my whole edit bay and setting it up the way that I normally do. So this is what you get. I hope you like it. Let's jump out of the edit bay and go back to Matt talking to all of you while he's sitting in his edit bay. I think that's the better angle to wrap this up. Okay, bye. So that's it. Apple, if you are listening, if you're watching this video, please strongly, strongly consider figuring out how to prioritize adding audio crossfades, the option T keyboard shortcut, or a button that you can push in the user interface that allows us to quickly add audio crossfades, even with its one clip at a time or to all the clips that we select in our timeline. That would be a huge time saver in editing on Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and it would elevate the experience of editing and finishing videos in Final Cut Pro for the iPad immensely. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, Keep chopping that broccoli, even if it's on an iPad, which I like to do. It's fun. You can do this. You can use your pencil. The jog wheel is awesome. I just really enjoy editing like this. I've also got a link down in the description to this case, this TomTalk case. They sent this to me. This video is not sponsored by TomTalk, but they did send me this case for me to check out. And I've been using it for a few weeks now, and it's been really helpful. It covers the whole iPad and then flips back to let you prop it up, which I think is really nice. And of course, there's a place to stow your Apple Pencil, which is great. And you can fold it up and you're good to go. Throw it in a bag, off you go. So TomTalk, a uh, pretty nice case. I'm happy with it. Maybe you will be too. Check out the link in the description. All right, that's it for real this time. Bye.